In this video, we're going to scatter some pebbles across our ground surface, and to do that, we're going to use the shape splatter once again. So I'm going to just zoom in to uh, this section here where we created the medium dirt mounds, and so I had this shape, uh, which I tiled and then warped, uh, and so what I'm going to do is start with this, uh, this warp node. So first, uh, let me create a levels, and I'm going to take the output of this warp and plug it here into the levels. So now I'm going to uh, use the levels to kind of process some of the grayscale values here. So uh, let's just move our input black uh, closer here towards the input white. And then I'm going to uh, just kind of round off these edges uh, by just taking my uh, gamma and pulling that towards the input black like this. All right, so uh, this is going to be uh, the shape that we're able to create here for these pebbles. All right, now that I have this in place, I'm going to create a shape splatter node here. And so here's our shape splatter. I'm going to need the background height. And so we are continuing to kind of chain these shape splatters together, which I mentioned previously allows us to manage the levels in which our height maps are blending together. So if I want this to go into the order of the these pebbles are going to come after the result of these small dirt shapes. So I'm going to take the output from this shape splatter and use that as the input for my background height. So now I have uh, these pebble shapes, and I'm going to isolate specific patterns out of this, once again using the uh, crop grayscale node. So uh, here, we'll double click this area, and let me just start to uh, select a few of these uh, shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work on, uh, I think, some smaller uh, pebble shapes. So we're gonna use, uh, let's say, this one, and I'm just gonna just hit Control D with that uh, crop node selected. Let's go to the area output here, and uh, let's see, we'll choose this guy here. And once again, Control D, I'm gonna do three of these uh, just to be consistent with uh, what I've done in previous videos. Uh, again, double click that area, and let's just find another uh, kind of pebble shape I can work with. Uh, here, let's try this guy. Okay, so I have these three here. Now on my shape splatter, what I'm gonna do is just come over to my pattern and set this input number here to three. And then let's feed in our pattern shape. So this will be pattern one, this guy here will be pattern two, and the output of this one here will be pattern three. You can see the result here in my 2D view. So uh, let's visualize this through the base material. So I'm just going to um, redistribute my connection lines here, hold down shift, left click the output, and then just drag it over here to the output of our new shape splatter. And so now we see these here in our 3D view. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on scattering uh, kind of smaller pebbles uh, with a large quantity of these smaller pebbles. So for the X and Y amount, I'm going to set this to a value of 75 by 75. Okay, so here's what we're getting. If I zoom in, we can see uh, all these little pebble shapes here. All right, so now let's come over here to our scale, and I'm going to adjust my scale random a bit. So uh, again, it's always good to just randomize these parameters whenever we can. So that's just all I'm doing here. And let's see, we need to go to our position. Uh, let's set our position random all the way to a value of 2. So we're just scattering these across. Then let's uh, come over here to our rotation, and our rotation random, just going to set that to 1. Scrolling down here to our height. Now what I'm going to do is set my conform to background. So I'm going to take this uh, slider and set this uh, around 0.88 or so. And so now when I do that, it makes it kind of difficult to see these shapes. So now what I'm going to do is scroll up here towards the top where we have our scale. And I'm going to try uh, 1.5 here for my scale. All right, so that's starting to bring uh, these pebble shapes back. However, because we use that conform to background, you can see, well, the shapes are now conforming to that underlying slope from that background uh, height. However, uh, they're also blending with that background height, and you can see a lot of this noise coming through these pebbles, and I really don't want that to happen. So I have an option here called the smooth conform background. So if I start to enable this here, we'll just set it up uh, to a higher value. You can see that it essentially just smooths out the height for the pebbles. Uh, so we're no longer picking up uh, a lot of that noise from that, uh, that underlying background height that we fed into our shape splatter. And this is giving me the result that I want. So now I have these pebbles. They are following along with that background with the slope of that background height, but they're now they're smooth, so they represent this height that I want from these particular shapes. 
Okay, so now we have this in place. We have a lot of these pebbles kind of scattering everywhere. They are following the background, but they're still kind of just laying on top of it too much. So what I'm gonna do is come over to my height offset and just kind of lower this value. Uh, we'll try something like this. It just kind of pushes them down uh, into the ground surface. Then, uh, of course, again, uh, let's just randomize this. Uh, like I said, it's always best to randomize these values whenever you can. And let's scroll down finally here to our masking. Let's introduce a little masking to this. So we'll, uh, I might try, let's see, let's do, let's do a mask value of 0.25. Okay, so we just kind of randomly mask some of these out. So now we have uh, a lot of these kind of small pebbles uh, just scattered all over the ground like this. Okay, so like I said, we are going to approach this as a leveled effect. So on the bottom level, uh, we have uh, these small pebbles, uh, but we have a, kind of a large quantity of them. Now, uh, just to kind of to bring some extra random values to this, I'm going to just create another shape splatter node and blend it with what we have here so far. So uh, I also, again, I'm just going to, instead of just reusing these shapes, I'm going to select another set of shapes. So this time I'm going to use a, uh, a crop grayscale again, and let's just feed in our levels here. Now, um, I'm going to choose just kind of some different shapes, because like I said, I want these to represent maybe some larger pebble shapes. So uh, what I'm going to do is maybe try going for, let's say, maybe this shape here. So we can try this one. Let's see which ones we used here. Um, let's control D, so make another copy of this guy and double click our area and let's select, let's see, another set. So this time I'm gonna choose this one here and once more, uh, control D. Nothing magical about me using three patterns, it's just something I'm kind of going with here. Uh, and then I'm going to also use, uh, let's see, I think I used this one here, let's do Let's maybe try this one. Okay, so now I have uh, three new patterns that's going to represent uh, these kind of larger uh, pebble rocks. I'm not really sure I like this one though when I think about it. I think it's almost just a little too square. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is just change and grab this shape right here. So I don't think I'm using that one already, using just three, three new patterns. Okay, so shape splatter once again. And uh, because we want this to blend with the height that we've been building up so far, we're just going to take the output of the shape splatter and just plug that in as our background height. Let's come over here to uh, the pattern. We're going to set our input number here to three. And then let's see, we're going to put this guy as pattern one, this one as pattern two, and this one as pattern three. And we can see the result here in our 2D view. Let's redistribute our connection line here, going out to our base material, like this. And now we see that in our 3D view. So once again, it's just a matter of going through and just playing around with these settings to get uh, the result we want. So this time you can see that, uh, let's see, let's maybe switch this to 25 by 25. Also going to, uh, let's see, we'll come back to scale in a minute. Let's just scroll down and let's go ahead and set our conform to background. So I'm gonna do that same um, option here, but then I need to smooth it as well, just as we did previously. Okay, so now we have that in place. We get a better idea of what our scale looks like. Let's go back here to our position, and we need to do a, a, a random position here to this. And let's do our random rotation as well. Okay, let's now come back here to our height offset, and I'm gonna lower this a bit. Just kind of push these down into the ground, okay. And finally, let's come over here and let's just do a little bit of a mask random to this. Okay, so this time we did, uh, let's do 0 0.5. Let's use a nice uh, number here. Okay, so now you can see the result of what we're getting here. We have these smaller pebbles, we have some larger pebbles scattered in here as well. And the result of blending these two different levels like this, again, this is the smaller pebbles, this is the larger pebble. By blending them together like this, uh, I think that we get a more organic or realistic result here, but we also have a lot of extra flexibility because you can see we're just blending in uh, you know, six different patterns here between these two levels of height. When, in regards to what our pebbles look like. And this just gives us more flexibility and control. So we're getting close to finishing up our final height map. 
In the next video, we're going to add some more detail. We're going to add some small twigs to this. But uh, one of the things you might be thinking as a new user to Substance is, you know, we're doing all this work, but uh, that's just it. It's a lot of work. You know, we're adding all these nodes and doing all these things. But what you have to do is think about this is not just as a single one-off texture. We're building a system here that can be reused in other materials. And also this texture can easily be reconfigured to represent, you know, a different section of dirt ground just by changing a simple slider. So to give you an idea of what I mean, we've, we've done this work so far and we've gotten this result. Now, let's just say that I come over here to this noise, which is driving this warp uh, that we're feeding into all of our shape splatters. Let's say that I come over to this noise, and I just simply change something like the disorder value of this noise. So I do this, and you can see it's going to reconfigure our ground to be something completely different. Uh, it's just reorganizing everything. So you can imagine if I was trying to do all this, you know, by hand and recreate all of these shapes and, and, and do all of this work and replicate it over and over and over. And this is one of the core benefits of using Substance Designer is I've built this system and now it's just a matter of me just changing a few parameters. And these parameters I can expose so that when I bring this substance into, let's say, a 3D application or a game engine, I can make a simple slider change and get a completely different randomized look of this ground texture. Right now, this is just affecting one small aspect of our graph. And because you know we're basing everything off this height that we're creating, just simply changing our height is going to update everything. It's going to update our occlusion. It's going to update our roughness, our normal, our color, everything that we're doing. While you may put a little bit of work up front, the overall time you save and increase in productivity pays in dividends as you build up libraries and utilities of materials here in Substance Designer.